Andrew McCart, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm here with the Seanie Mac is back. Sean McComb, how's things, brother? I'm not seeing you for a while. No, uh, I'm all good. Um, I've been away, obviously, you know, I'm not based in Glasgow anymore, so yeah, I haven't seen you in a while, but I see you've got a good bronze tan there anyway. <laughs> you think I should be on camera? Oh yeah, definitely should be me taking the interview. I have a face for the radio. Well, I've got a face for the radio as well, mate. So be, it's just two ugly guys talking, that's all it is. Um, well, yeah, yeah, I do want to talk about, yeah, you said you're not in Glasgow anymore. You have moved uh, into Dublin with Pete Taylor, with his huge stable of fighters and your ex-island teammates and your ex-friends and stuff like that. So how's that down there? Yeah, it's good, really, really good. Um, fresh start. Um, different, a lot different back in a team environment. Um, something I've always been used to anyway, like obviously coming off the Irish League team and stuff. Um, back in, the, in a good environment with uh, teammates around me, a bit of crack in the gym and and uh, enjoying the training. The training, everyone knows Pete's a technical genius, so it's good to be around that and, and just develop the skills that I already have. And, and hopefully bring him into whatever the future has ahead of me. Let's talk about the future then. Your last fight, you, you went down to lightweight for the first time. You had a long, 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 long cap. Now we can make excuses and stuff like that. You're not a man to make excuses, but when are you back? Are you going to stay at lightweight? Are you going to move up again to 140? And have you got a date in mind? What's happening? Um, wherever the opportunity comes, making lightweight is an excuse for me. I felt good. That, like I felt good physically. I felt good. I wasn't tired. I don't feel like I was drained. Um, so it's always an option. Super lightweight. I've performed. I, I, I probably my best performances have came as super lightweight. So it's still an, still an option. If if an opportunity comes there, I'll take it. No sweat. I've always says that. I'm probably stuck between two weights. I've got. I'm very fortunate to have the size and the build that I have, where I can go between both weights. Um, so now I'm just open for opportunities and. In terms of fight, fight news, I have nothing in line yet, but I'm back training. I'm living the life in full time training. I'm, I'm still away from the family. I'm in Dublin Monday to Friday, and uh, I'm just hoping I can get out as soon as possible and uh, put things right. Bring Shawnee, as, as Jamie Cannon likes to call it, Shawnee Mac 2.0. 2.0. Listen, 2.0, let's see him like that. Like, when you were with Danny Vaughan, Danny Vaughan said you would be a world champion. A lot of people. Said Carl Frampton said it. You know, even Mick Collins, Jamie Collins said you will be a world champion. You, you've had it on your back. People are saying this for a long time now. Did you ever feel pressure when people were saying that you were a future world champion? Did you ever feel? I know you've never felt pressure, and you say that I don't give a fuck actually, like we talked about before. But was it the back of your mind a little bit of pressure that all these great boxers and fighters, ex-fighters, are saying this about you uh, in Belfast? They're still saying it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So like, it doesn't matter to me. I, I still believe it. Doesn't that like it doesn't stop me? Um, one bad performance, one hiccup along the journey doesn't define where I go in my career. Uh, like again, it's just it's just a part of the sport. Um, take it as it comes and, and deal with it. Put on the performances, put on good camps, learn along the way, and 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 just keep taking in everything. Be a sponge and just take in everything you can get in terms of learning experiences. Different environments, different venues, different setups, crowds, no crowds. Take us all in and, and, and make, make me a better person, a better boxing overall. To, so then whenever I do, hopefully get to that stage in my career. Uh, I've experienced it all and I'm ready to go. The, the last two things, a lot of people were saying that, that you quit and that. And you said I never quit. I, just did, well, I can't remember, we've done a, a Zoom interview. I hate Zoom interviews and stuff like that. So you're next out and stuff. I don't want to go back to like this whole quit thing and stuff like that because we, we discussed it, we talked about it. You, there's an interview on IFL, so you can go and watch it if you want to see what you were said. So you're next out and do you need to go out there and prove all these doubters wrong? Do you need to go out there and just give them the best performance, the best Sean McComb, the best, the best version of yourself to prove all these doubters wrong? Yeah, like... In a way, I did quit. You know what I mean? I'm not going to sit and talk shit, say, but I wasn't getting beat up. You know what I mean? Like, was... It was level, it was a level fight. It was a good, really good, good fight. And uh, a really good fight for spectators to watch. Um, but I just wasn't there mentally. I wasn't there at all, I didn't want to be there. I thought in my mind that I'll still win the fight in this frame of mind. And that's one of the biggest things I've learned in that frame of mind. Just say no, like no. I'll fight in four weeks or five weeks when I'm, I'm ready to go. I've just had a baby, I've just opened the gym. 
I've been away, like my face was called all three times. I've been in Dubai, I've been in, pa I've been everywhere but the house. That's having that prayed on your chest, where like I'll still win, and that arrogance to think I'll still win. I'll get this fade over me, and I'll, I'll and then I'll make the, like I'll, I'll put things right. I won't. You need a proper fucking periodized camp. You need stuff to be done right. You need, um, and because of COVID. That wasn't the case. We couldn't. We did. We didn't have the luxury of bringing in sparring partners, go on sparring, or we couldn't travel. We couldn't do much. So that was all against us. And Gavin Gwynn had everything on his doorstep, which was fucking brilliant for him. He had all his sparring partners lined up. He was telling me after he was watching my Instagram or my social media. He realised I had no sparring and I hadn't put anything up of camp, nothing. So they they like jumped on that and used it as their game plan to just walk me down, walk me down, knowing that I was fit, but I wasn't fight fit. And it worked out for them, so well, well done to them and for discovering that and working that out and, and that doing things right. Now that's made me realise what, what's required in a camp with proper sparring, proper periodization, um, and doing things right. So, feel us coming up though, Sean. The feel up. Come on, boy, what's happening? Could be some, could be some news. I actually don't know what's happening. I, as far as I'm, I'm more. It's supposed to be the sixth of August, and they're bringing spectators back and all this. But I haven't heard that I'm on it. All I know is I've asked, can I be on it? That's a perfect platform for me to bounce back and showcase the skill that I have. Because like, my my confidence aren't shut. I'm still the same Sean McCall. I can still put on a, a, a master boxing display. Um, I've tweaked tweaked a few things in my, in my training and in my style um, with Pete, but I'm still a good boxer. People still enjoy watching me spawn. People are like, some people are baffled when they watch me spawn. They're like, holy fuck, I've never, like, the, the talent you have is unbelievable. And, uh, and I, like, I know it. So I think I feel it would be a perfect platform to put me on there against a good name and, and just, just catapult the game from her, put my uh, career right back in in the mix and and hopefully I can do that and the thing, that's the thing you mentioned that you're caught between two ways lightweight and super lightweight you've talked about that deal become world champion I mean whatever division you pick it's going to be hard for you man I mean look at the champions in lightweight Josh Taylor's up there at uh, super lightweight which one do you choose well like you say it's 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 a the, the, probably one of the, the two of the hardest weights I believe and uh we just need Josh Taylor to move up the, the welterweight and throw the belt out everywhere so everyone gets a, gets a whack at it but uh, no, like I say, listen, to be in a ring, even to be in that same company as them boys is, would be unbelievable and uh, like I've always said it, I believe, I do I belong in amongst them names and, uh, and to, to, to be in around them names would be unbelievable for me, I would enjoy our company, I would enjoy it, I would enjoy the challenges, I would enjoy the all the shit that comes with it and like I say, but hopefully in a couple of fights then we can just catapult and opportunity comes and I'll take it and we're fucking, we're right up in there. Like I say, hopefully the next time you have a fight date, if it is the failure, who knows, fingers crossed for you, Sean, I'll be over there and we can have a, a proper chat with you back in that wing column. 100% anytime, you know, you know I'm always there, lad. Thank you so much, brother, thank you.